All right, I'm it's recording you. Yes. Great. So, what is this all about? Uh, well, I'm I'm getting back to my memoir. I have a memoir about my last tour to Afghanistan, halfway written. Uh, I was in the army for for six years. It's hard to believe looking back. Uh, it was. Uh, includes uh, one tour to Iraq, two to Afghanistan, and I need to write this book. It's time to, to organize my life so that I can do it. This actually has really good background, like it looks nice. Great. So I was in the army, uh, I joined the army in, uh, in 2000. Uh, right after I finished a computer science degree from Stanford, my classmates were getting hired for six-figure starting salaries, but I was so burnt out on computers that I went in search of adventure, and I found it. And that's how uh, you ended up in the Army? Yeah. But I didn't go straight to university after high school. I got First I got a couple part-time jobs, and I went to night school. And then one of those part-time jobs turned into a programming gig. So at 19, I was earning like real money as a programmer. I was earning as much as my either of my parents ever made. So uh, yeah, so I worked really hard as a program up until I got the degree. But I, I burnt myself out, and uh, you know, I I think I didn't have a good like mental guide in life. I just wanted adventure and it's not like it was entirely a bad experience the military but I do think I wasted a little bit of potential that I you know if I could go back in time I'd advise myself against it although a lot of it was fun and exciting and I did learn a lot it's interesting that you say it was fun it's the first magic <laughs> yeah well I feel like I've written, a, I've written about this in those New York Times essays. And New York Times had a blog called the Home Fires blog and they invited veterans to contribute their stories. So I wrote a, a little bit about this, how like the soldier, the two narratives that are most palpable about soldiers are either like the hero narrative or the victim narrative, where the soldiers kind of heroically struggle against you know moral ambiguity or else the soldiers are just you know innocent kids who are duped by propaganda into this war and see all these bad things and i'm not saying those aren't true like that's definitely describes a lot of people's experiences but but a lot of people also have a lot of fun um, a lot of people go back for more uh, towards the end of a deployment, soldiers who haven't seen enough fighting start volunteering for dangerous missions because they want to shoot guns, they want to tell all their friends and family, they want to achieve that status by saying, yes, I've been in contact you know, with the enemy. Um, that's a big part of the story too, and that's a part that that is a little bit unpalpable. Like that, that doesn't make it into the movies, it rarely makes it into the movies just how, how bloodthirsty people are. So I was in the army four and a half years. I joined in 2000, became a paratrooper and infantry officer, finished ranger school, went to the 82nd Airborne Division. Then 9-11 happened. I went to Afghanistan in 2002 as an infantry platoon leader. Went to Iraq in 2003-2004 as a company XO. Uh, and then in August of 2004 I got out. That was after four and a half years. They asked me to stay an extra half a year, and I did. Uh, I got out. I kind of became really skeptical, first about foreign policy, then about government in general. And right as my skepticism was in full bloom, a giant hand came out of the sky, grabbed me by the scruff of my neck, and tossed me back to my old home, Fort Bragg, North Carolina where I was retrained in civil affairs and, and made one more deployment to Afghanistan. Uh, six years later, I returned to Afghanistan, this time as a civil affairs officer. Um, and my eyes were wide open by that time, politically, philosophically. Awesome. So, is it going to be, um, like, 
kind of maybe what is it called like style or wise or what like is it going to be um I don't know maybe have like any kind of like humor in it or is it going to be really straightforward or what's like the mood I guess or you don't know yet well, it's it's like halfway written, and I got I got hundreds of pages of journals, so so I feel like I'm more sculpting this than writing it from scratch. I'm sculpting it from what what I already have. Uh, the mood, I don't know. I, I guess I, I'd refer people to to what I've already written in the New York Times Home Fires blog or elsewhere, or in Fire and Forget. It's an anthology of military fiction that came out. I've got a story in there. It came out this last February. We'll see see my style. It's kind of weird talking about your own art or your own your own craft. You probably understand that. I think you kind of have. Well, you're trained to do it, right? Style. I don't know. I, I think I try to be real honest and candid uh, more than anything else about how I felt. I, I also think a lot, and I've read a lot of books about politics and economics, so I'm bringing pretty big ideas to bear on these experiences. So are there going to be maybe some reasons to why things are the way they are, why they happen the way they happen, based on some yeah, you know, political I think that, reasons? In fact, that, that might be a good description. Of, of this project. I'm just trying to understand the military. I'm trying to understand our modern wars. And I think I've come to understand them pretty well. And, and I want to share that understanding. That might be a good description. Thank you for that cue. <laughs>